Welcome back everybody. Now because this is such a big job, I've decided to split it into two parts. And welcome back to Mikey's Vlogs. Today we're going to be tackling the ESL. But before we even get into it, I just wanted to give you a brief example of why the ESL is a catastrophic fault. But also on the other hand, why it, it isn't so catastrophic to a certain extent. But that will only applies if you have access to the, the ESL in the unlock position. Firstly, to explain how the ESL works, it basically works with the EIS and they work in sync. Basically, you have your key that has an electronic chip in it. And in order to get the car to start and to bypass the standard security immobilizer on most W204s and Mercedes, you have to enter the key and then you get this little noise and you'll hear it. That little noise that little turning noise lets you know that the correct key has now been entered into the eis and is now sending a signal to the esl to unlock because the correct key is in the ignition so the way i did it when i found my esl was in the lock position i noticed that it was just during the beginning because once your esl begins to fail you'll actually get intermittent uh faults where you put the key in and nothing will happen. Then all of a sudden you take the key, I put it back in and then it will actually unlock. If you actually ask yourself and try to bring it down to common knowledge or common sense, it tells you that the motor is now starting to fail, that it's not getting enough power or enough charge through the motor. Now this can happen for many reasons. One, the, your battery drained out completely. Therefore, all the power in the ESL has discharged. Therefore, it, it doesn't have enough uh, say push to just spin the motor that rotation in order to unlock it and lock it again now what i did in order to tackle that was because i knew it was just in the earlier stages of the motor failing i knew that with other electronics sometimes it just takes that simple tap everyone does it the tv is blurry you, you to give it a tap and then the tv just fixes itself somehow almost the same principle for this but a little bit different this is what i did I got underneath the uh, the uh, steering column itself and just with the rubber part of this hammer I tapped on it where the ESL is located but directly under it I just began to tap just enough to give the motor enough shock to move it so hopefully it would just kick it out of that little bind it was in the motor and it would just spin it enough and to my surprise, you would not believe it. It spun it just enough to unlock it. And as soon as I heard it unlock, I was like, holy crap, what do I do now? So the first thing that came to mind was disconnect the battery. Because as long as you disconnect the battery, it will remain in the unlock position and then you can get to it freely. But if you forget to disconnect the battery and pull the key back out, then you have to restart that whole process all over again, getting it to unlock and disconnecting the battery. So that's the most important thing i wanted to mention guys in order to tackle the job the way i did you have to be able to get the esl in the unlock position and disconnect the battery so it remains unlocked leaving the key in the ignition so that it will remain unlocked but once you've disconnected the battery you can pull the key out of the ignition it's not a problem anymore because you've already disconnected the battery so it cannot give power to the esl to lock again even though the key has been removed that is the most important part of this job guys if i could not get the esl to unlock i would not have bothered trying to tackle this job because the truth is there's just a lot more complications in trying to remove the esl in the locked position remember that guys only attempt this if you got the esl to unlocked and you disconnected the battery in time because without getting the ESL in the unlock position, you actually shouldn't be uh, meddling with it unless you have access to a a module hacker, kind of like a, it's a little device that allows you to cut keys and read the ESL, the module, and also connect it to the cluster in order to read all sorts of different information. In order to tackle the job the way I have done it, you need to be able to get the ESL in the unlock position. Now that isn't an easy job in most cases but there is a little trick that i learned that i wanted to share with you guys that I, in order to get my esl to unlock but fortunate enough for me my esl failed in my driveway in my garage so 
I was able to tinker with it and do some research and figure out how to do everything. Now, mind you, I had no experience in doing such a job. And I can even show you on my mobile phone how I, I asked somebody to help me uh, fix the problem. But he wanted 1750 and he was saying that was the bottom line. 1750 to replace a part that only cost $10. And basically, it just takes your time, your effort, and your labor to do the job. And it's very simple. It's only removing the steering wheel and then four, four long Torx bolts. It's that easy to pull down the steering column. And not only that, you don't have to remove the, the steering column. It would make it easier to remove it, but you don't actually have to remove it. What you can actually do is lower it just enough in order to be able to remove the ESL from its locked position because the ESL actually sits in a position with the locking pin on top there's a locking pin pin on top and so if your ESL isn't unlocked that locking pin isn't free to to depress and allow you to slide the ESL out of its lock position and the problem with with um removing it in the locked position is that you have a very high chance and high probability of actually frying the chip inside the ESL and that's one of the big issues. The common fault in the ESL isn't actually the chip, it's the actual motor. It's a cheap little motor that you can find on most 12 volt remote control cars and things like fans that have, have a rotation, a constant rotation. And basically that's what spins the ESL motor in order to unlock it and lock it again. But it's the motor that fails over time, not the chip. But I can almost guarantee you that if you remove the ESL in the locked position and you hack that screw off and then open and proceed to open it up, you are going to fry that chip. The chip is still reading that it's in the locked position. And once you actually pry it open, you've then just destroyed the chip. If you do it right the first time, you don't have to worry about those complications later on because then you also have to worry about getting a new bolt, putting it on there, making it stay, welding it on. It's just pain in the ass but the way i show you the way i tackled it this has to be probably the best way in my honest opinion to tackle this job so take it from me check out this video look at how i do it and um hopefully uh it will give you some tips and tricks on how to complete your your fix if your esl fails on you Okay guys, just to give you a better look of where the uh, three screws are. So there's one there behind my uh, base knob. Then you go to the left and there's another one right there. And the far left, there's one more right there. They're the three bolts. They're the three uh, T20 Torx screws that you need to remove in order to pull down this lower flap underneath the... Okay guys, now after you remove the screws and have pulled down this little part here in order to remove the hood lever and the OBD2 socket you have to pull on this towards you like so and then it simply lifts out like so there you go it just lifts out after you uh, pull this back here this is what locks it in and then you just pull that out and then your OBD2 can simply pop out. Okay, and then in order to remove the the hood lever, there's just a Phillips screw in uh, that you need to remove. So you just come in from where the hood lever is, where the where the hood lever is, and uh, just unscrew it, and uh, that will free up the hood release lever. And then you simply just pull it out. Okay guys, so now to remove the steering wheel, the clock spring, and just the uh, surround that covers the steering column. So even though I have another video that shows you exactly how to remove the airbag and the steering wheel, I'm going to show you guys again, just so you guys get a clearer picture of how to remove it all. Now, using either a tool that is the same size as the hole, you want to just come in at 45 degrees, go straight, push it in till you feel it unclip the airbag. Do the same to the other side, like so. 
You will feel it. Unclip. There you go. So, as you can see, what you're looking to do is insert it through here and push on this cable. Just like that. See? You can see the cable moving, and that's what releases the clip from here. Now, once you get to this part, you need your your pick tool. Now, you want to just pry on these two clips right here, and they just come out like that. So like I showed in the other clip, you're just prying on these clips, and then it releases it. And then you can just simply set it, as, set it aside. Same for the other one as well. Like so, and that's out. Just like that, guys. Perfect. Now, you need your 10 mil hex and a breaker bar in order to remove the steering wheel. Okay, guys, so I keep forgetting that I have the facelifted steering wheel already. So, here's my old steering wheel, the pre facelifted steering wheel. Now, I just wanted to show you how to remove this in case uh, you still have the uh, pre facelifted steering wheel. In order to remove this wheel, all you have to do is use a T30 Torx bit, unscrew these two screws on each side, like so, and then it will release the airbag like so don't worry about losing the screws because they do not come out completely they actually still stay in there and what that does is it just releases the airbag enough so you can open it then what you have to do here is release uh, unplug the two plugs for the paddle shifters now in order to take these out, all you do is just pull them straight out, like so. And that's it. Then it's just the exact same steps to remove the airbag and the uh, control for the buttons. And then you simply remove the bolt, the uh, size 8 hex, hex bolt and uh, un undo the two clips in there and that's it and that's how you remove a pre-facelifted uh, pre pre lifted steering wheel here you go 8 mil, 10 mil hex now you want to hold the wheel with one hand as you break the lock off Okay, so that one's a bit in there. Here we go. So now you just want to hold it with one hand and simply break it. And then once you have that done, you can just unscrew it by hand. And there you have it, that's now removed, unscrew it all the way, and it should just come off, bang guys, and there's the steering wheel removed. Now in order to remove the clock spring, it's pretty simple, you just have to pull it forward, like so, and it comes out in one piece. You are not trying to remove 
the clock spring from this. Just pull it out all in one piece. And then you need your trim, uh, your pick tool again. You're going to see, I'll show you in just a second after I remove it. Okay, so. Once you get here, you're going to see this plugged into into this part here now all you have to do is press on this clip here and that releases it there's a clip right here okay now to remove the rest you just have to pull it out because it simply just clips in guys okay Controller. Just put that to the side. Just leave that there for a sec. The wind booster controller. Okay. Now, all we want to do is remove the instrument cluster. Okay. So, in order to remove the instrument cluster, we need a uh, trim removal tool to pry here and just slowly work your way around don't be too rough guys you do not want to break this and it just pops out like so there we go As you can see, they just clip in from there. So once you get your trim removal tool in and pry it down, you just want to pull it forward. I'm going to remove these four T20 uh, screws. There's four of them. You need an extension. Well, they are pretty far deep in. Four, and then you simply want to lift that out that just pulls back pulls out guys and then you want to lean it forward as you lift it out and then you simply have the plug back here and in order to remove it, you've got to press down and pull this lever back over it, like so. Look. And pull backwards. And then it just unclips. Just like that. There you go. That's your instrument cluster out. Now you just want to remove this surrounding part here. It just simply uh, clips out of place. And then you pull it, pull it forwards. At this point, I'm going to disconnect my wind booster where it's kind of in the way so I've just disconnected it and we just set that off to the side in order to remove I mean to loosen the steering column there's four E12 Torx inverted Torx bits now what I mean by that is this is the Torx bit so as you can see they are E12 E12 bits sockets and there's one there, right there. There's another one right there. And then there's two more all the way under here. Which is... Hmm. 
there and there. You see these two Torx bits here? There's one right there and there's one right there. These four inverted Torx bits, Torx bolts, are what going to loosen the steering column. Just enough for you to lower the ESL module and release it. Okay, now with all four bolts removed, as you can see, your steering column is actually pretty loose. So now it's just a matter of maneuvering it enough just to lower the column enough so you can reach the electronic steering lock. Now, if you take a closer look, you can actually see the steering lock just underneath. Okay, just to show you guys that all I did was lower the column and I removed the ESL. And there you have it guys, how to remove the ESL without having to hack it off and in the unlock position. So the reason why it has to be the in an unlock position is because without it being unlocked, you cannot depress this. And how that works is the bolt that we removed earlier, that 13 millimeter nut, this simply sits on top of it like that, like so, just to secure it on, just to secure it on. And that's all that does. So in order to remove it, you can see that it must, and I'm telling you, it must be in the unlock position or else I've seen other clips where guys have hacked, hacked this off, they've actually sawed it off and then tried to replace it with another bolt. Like that made, that, that all works, but the truth is if you do it right the first time, you don't have to worry about it again. Now, all we have to do is take this apart, replace the $10 motor inside, and we're good to go. Then all we have to do is reassemble this whole cockpit, and uh, we're good. Okay guys, now that we have this out, we need to disassemble it. Now, I've already removed it, but I've left one in just to show you guys. So what you want to do is, this is actually a special tool designed for it. Now, as you can see, it's, it's, nor, it's neither a square nor a triangle on the tip. And what you have to do is, get it in, and rotate as you're pulling out and as you can see it slowly starts to come out there you go and eventually it just comes out now you've got to do that to all four sides move that and once you have it out a little bit grab a pair of tweezers and just slowly remove it don't squeeze too hard with the, the tweezers because you do not pliers because you do not want to break a uh, dent it nor reshape it by pressing too hard now <clears throat> to disassemble what you want to do is lift it up with this facing down like so set that off to the side now you need a uh, T10 Torx bit undo this like so and remove this bit okay now all you actually have to replace is this motor so you just have to remove it like so Make sure everything stays where it is. Take that out and simply get the new one and drop it back in. And it's that easy guys. That's all you have to do. This motor is actually what fails. Not the chip here. So the notorious chip that everybody talks about is the NEC chip. Which is, one second I will show you. If for some reason it's not in the unlock position and you end up opening the ESL you can actually fry this chip because how the circuit board actually works is it has relays that help it to realize when the ESL is unlocked and locked and if it's actually locked 
and you pry it open you have a high probability of frying the chip and destroying it this is why I stress to you it's very important that you know what you're doing before you attempt to do this job and also don't forget to grease all the moving parts of the motor so as you can see on the left and the right where the pin is make sure that you grease where the black le lever meets the wheel and where the motor meets the wheel as well it's very important you grease these parts because you want them to move freely just remember that guys okay then once you've greased everything you want to grab the circuit board again place it back into place make sure that everything is in the correct position obviously <clears throat> then grab your T10 torque screw again put it back in screw it back into place like so there we go and that's about it now it's just a matter of then you want to grab your case put it back on still works make sure that still depresses it's all back together now and you want to put these back in and they just simply push back in like this There's one. Now they do go in one way, so uh, make sure you look for the side that has a, uh, a little marking on it. Like so. And then you just want to push in as you turn, and it goes back inside. There we go. Last one. I mean, second last, sorry. Go in there and rotate as you push in. And now for the last one, lucky last. As you can see, one side is smaller than the other. As you can see, this is the side that needs it, that needs to be facing out. It's a it's slightly smaller than the other side. So when you look at it, you'll be able to tell. And then just simply push down as you rotate, and that secures it in again. And there you have it guys, done. The motor replaced in the ESL, now we just need to take it back to the car and re-